Good evening. Welcome to Our Lady of Peace. Our entrance hymn, along with all other hymns and responses, can be found in your worship aid. Please stand for the entrance procession. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Alleluia, Alleluia. O burning sun with golden beam, and silver moon with softer gleam, Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. O oh, rushing wind and breezes soft, O oh, clouds that ride the winds aloft, Alleluia. Alleluia. O rising morn in praise rejoice. O lights of evening find a voice. Alleluia. 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 In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we come before the Lord, we are mindful of our need for his mercy and his healing. And so, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, 
you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking to me say to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Heart of face and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. And whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord. are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. To you I lift up my eyes, who are enthroned in heaven. As the eyes of servants are the hands of their masters. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. As the eyes of a maid are on the hands of her mistress, so are the eyes on the Lord our God, till he have pity on us. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. Have pity on us, O Lord, have pity on us. For we are more than sated with contempt. Our souls are more than sated with the mockery of the arrogant, with the contempt of the proud. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated. Because of the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan. To beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell with me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints. For the sake of Christ, for when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord.
Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. It seems like every museum has some piece in it, or maybe it's a traveling exhibit, but some special exhibition that kind of serves as the main draw. For instance, if you go to Paris and you go to the Louvre, most people want to see the Mona Lisa. That's kind of the draw of going there, even though it's an enormous museum with all sorts of historical artifacts and artwork from throughout the centuries. It'd take you days to see everything. Uh, and if you've ever had the experience of going to see that one thing that the uh, museum is known for or this special exhibition, often you've got to go buy a lot of the other artwork or a lot of the other artifacts. And I don't know about you, but I always get the sense as I do that, that, you know, there's probably other significant things here, uh, but it doesn't always seem like it at the time. Because we've all seen plenty of landscapes and plenty of still art and plenty of different scenes and... Uh, that familiarity with it, it leads us to kind of a sense, unless we're conscious about it, that there isn't that much special here, that there isn't that much of interest or of note. But if you happen to maybe read the various placards or maybe you go to the museum with someone who is uh, uh, really into art and they've, they know all the other things that are there at the museum, you might all of a sudden realize that this thing that you've walked by before uh, that most people maybe walk by, has great significance, actually. Maybe it was by a notable artist, or it kind of set the tone for an era of art, and all of a sudden something that didn't seem to have much significance or uh, to be of much uh, note at all suddenly has great significance. I think perhaps an analogous thing is happening in the gospel today with Jesus as he comes to his native place, as he comes to his hometown. You think of the people that lived in the hometown of Jesus, how for 30 years they walked past that house and maybe they knew him, but he wasn't really any different than any of the other people in the town. Uh, and maybe they didn't ever interact with him at all. And now all of a sudden it, they get this sense that he claims to be someone important uh, but they have a hard time with that because he just was like anybody else that we walked by in every other house that we went past. That kind of familiarity that, uh, that they had with him didn't allow them to have faith in him. Or it made it more difficult for them to have faith in him because they weren't expecting anything significant. They weren't expecting anything great from him. They were just expecting the ordinary. Uh, and Jesus, of course, can
can do the extraordinary. We heard that he cured a few sick, at least, even without uh, their great, without much faith shown by them. Uh, but they weren't expecting that. And I think that this is uh, significant for us, too. I didn't plan on kind of having this connection with last weekend's readings, but there is kind of that connection uh, with last weekend as well. How do we, uh, last weekend was all the people crowding around Jesus and only one of them was cured, even though many were touching him. I think there's a similar thing going on there, but it's highlighted here as he goes to his hometown. So I think as we begin uh, as we, this month of July, a uh, little transition here, but it's related, I promise, uh, we're starting um, the year of focusing on the, the topic of the Eucharist from the Archbishop's pastoral letter. This is the letter that he wrote after the uh, synod finished up, and there were various themes in there, and we've tried to focus on one or the other as an archdiocese uh, each year uh, since he wrote it. And so this year we're focusing on the Eucharist, which aligns very nicely, as I've said before, with the National Eucharistic Revival. Just later on this month, there's going to be that gathering of tens of thousands of Catholics in Indianapolis uh, for the National Eucharistic Congress. And so we're very much focused on the Eucharist uh, at this point in time in our archdiocese and in our country. And I think the reason for this, one of them at least, is because we need to have our faith renewed in the Eucharist just as the people in Jesus' hometown needed to have their faith renewed in him. It's the same Jesus, but I think the same thing can happen. We come to Mass, and for the most part, often, it seems like it's kind of just the same familiar thing. Father gets up and says something. Maybe it's interesting. Maybe it's not. Uh, there's readings. They vary, but uh, there's the formats the same. Uh, we have different songs, but we follow the same repertoire. The Eucharistic prayer, there's four different options, but usually we just use one or two. And that kind of familiarity uh, in our worship can cause us to start to think that nothing extraordinary is happening or is going to happen or can happen here. But when we take a step back and we refresh ourselves on what our faith teaches about what is happening in the Eucharist, we realize that this is the most extraordinary thing. And suddenly, if we take the time to kind of uh, re-acquaint ourselves with that, just like that stuff that maybe we walk past in the art museum, suddenly it has great significance. Suddenly, the Eucharist has that great significance as well. And the Lord can do amazing things through it because we have that expectation that something great is happening here and something great can happen here. So how do we reacquaint ourselves with that? Well, that's kind of the whole point of this whole year, and it's going to be more than a year. Of course, uh, we want to continue to focus and refine our focus on the Eucharist and to deepen our faith in it. Uh, And so some of that is going to have to do with looking at how we celebrate the Eucharist, how we uh, make Sunday and the weekend, uh, Saturday evening, the most important thing that we do as parishes and and focus our our time and our efforts on that. But I think some of it, uh, to follow the analogy that I started with, goes back to even before we come to church, even before we come to Mass. You know, if you really want to have that good experience of appreciating the artwork that you're walking by at the museum, you might take some time to research what they have on display in their collection and also why they have it there, why it's important, why it's significant, uh, even before you leave for the museum. And I think that that's a key part of our Uh, renewal and our appreciation for and our understanding of what's happening at the Mass as well. It's helpful to take some time, and it doesn't have to be anything great or spectacular, but to take some time to reacquaint ourselves with what is happening at the Mass. It could be through spiritual reading, it could be through uh, podcasts on this topic, there's a whole variety of resources out there, and we're going to be calling attention to and pointing out many of them uh, in the weeks and months ahead. We do have, just to point out some today specifically, we do still have some of the books that we gave out uh, around the holidays. Um, They're entitled Beautifully Eucharist. They're kind of a gold yellow cover. They're still at the entrances. And I know many of you took some uh, around that time, but they're still there if you didn't get a chance. And they're nice short chapters, but it's something that you can can read just a a brief reflection, a couple pages here and there, uh, maybe every week, maybe even every couple weeks, But that preparation and that reflection on what it is we're doing here 
what it is, more importantly, that the Lord is doing here, before we even come, helps us to look forward to and to anticipate that something great is happening. Just one other uh, kind of practical thing that we can do as we uh, seek to be aware of this presence of the Lord and what he is doing in the Eucharist and in the Mass is to take a few moments uh, when we arrive at church to have that silent prayer. Uh, and yes, to bring to the Lord our needs and, and those around us who are in need, uh, to give thanks, all of those things that we always do in our prayer, but to take some time as well to call to mind what's about to happen. Maybe from what we've read or what we've listened to uh, in, since the last time we were at Mass or something that stuck, stuck with us as we did so, but to put ourselves in that frame of mind of what is about to come. Because then we do expect those great things that the Lord is about to do, and we are able to put our faith in it. Now, I know that coming uh, to Mass uh, and having that time before Mass starts can be a challenge. And so this is not to uh, call anybody out or anything like that. It's tough for me sometimes as I'm getting prepared for Mass and I'm trying to make sure that I have everything ready and I've got my homily in my head and all of that to take those moments to be a little bit recollected before we start. And there's a million reasons why, because of traffic or the alarm not going off or whatever, that we might be coming in right as Mass has started or even a little after. And that, that, that happens. That's life. But if we're able to take that time, at least to try to take that time uh, before Mass begins, to put ourselves in that frame of mind, then we're better attuned to what the Lord is doing and wants to do here in our midst. And so we ask today for the grace uh, to recognize who the Lord is, to recognize what he is doing, and not to just expect that the same old, same old thing is happening, but to expect that the Lord wants to do something great and is doing something great and amazing here in our midst every time we are at Mass. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Jesus was rejected by his own people. In faith, we accept him as our Lord and Savior, and we pray in his name. For our Archbishop Hebda, that he may be faithful in his prophetic ministry of teaching the Catholic faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in public office, 
that they may use their gifts and talents to promote unity and the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the first responders and those in the military, that they may be protected as they put themselves in harm's way for our sake. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our youth heading to extreme faith camp, that they may be kept safe, have good weather, and grow in relationship with Jesus this week. Let us pray to the Lord. For our parish, that our devotion to Mary may be deepened as we prepare to celebrate our feast day. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have died in Christ, including those who have given their lives to safeguard the freedom we enjoy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, in your goodness, hear the petitions of your believing people through Christ our Lord. Amen. As you're being seated, just a reminder that we had our mission appeal last uh, weekend, uh, and you're certainly able to drop any envelopes uh, for that mission appeal, the ones that were at the end of the pews and still are, into the collection today as well. Uh, it, and also you're able to drop them at the parish office at any time. So just be aware of that as we take up the collection. Teach me, O oh God, to follow your ways, to follow your ways to the end. My heart delights to follow your ways, to follow your ways to the end. Happy are they whose life is blameless, who follow God's law in their heart. Happy are all who do God's will Seeking God, seeking God, seeking God with their heart. Teach me, O oh God, to follow your ways, to follow your ways to the end. My heart delights to follow your ways, to follow your ways to the end. It is your will we keep your precepts, obeying them all you care. Oh, let my footsteps now be firm, seeking you, seeking you, seeking you with my heart. Teach me, O oh God, to follow your ways, to follow your ways to the end. My heart delights to follow your ways, to follow Bless me, your servant, in your kindness, obeying your word all my life. 
marvelous truths are in your law helping see help me see help me see with my heart teach me oh god to follow your ways to follow your ways to the end my heart delights to follow your ways to follow Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice. Sure hands. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mister be of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Maria Goretti, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, Michael, his assistant, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Uh 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Behold the 
sacred blood of Christ. May we all become what we receive. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> you may have seen in our update on 54th, our email newsletter, but with the help of the archdiocese, we are working on our parishioner database and making sure that it is accurate as possible. For instance, once children in a registered household turn 25, they are now going to be split off into their own household and so on and so forth, just trying to make sure it's, it's more accurate to the reality of the situation. Some things like that we can do on our own, but some of them we need your help with. We have a form linked on our events page, which is olpmn.org slash events. The, on that page, there's a tile that says update your household or register at OLP. It's the same form for both. So whether you're new uh, and you're looking to get registered, whether you maybe aren't sure if you're registered, or maybe you've been registered for a very long time, you can use that form uh, to uh, update your information or to give us your information so that we can make sure that it is accurate. If you have any questions or need any assistance with that, please contact the parish office. Thank you for your help with this effort so that we can serve you better. Normally there would be evening prayer for peace on Monday, but we're taking a break from that here in July. We'll resume on our usual second Monday of the month in August. Uh, so no, first, uh, no evening prayer for peace uh, to, on Monday, but we will pick that back up again in August. Everyone in the parish is asked to consider volunteering to help us with our church cleaning on Saturday, July 13th. I almost said November. I don't know why my mind said November. Saturday, July 13th. This is a great way to serve and to get to know other people in our community. The work involved mainly involves dusting and vacuuming, as well as cleaning the church pews, kneelers, and other furniture here in the sanctuary. It's scheduled from 9 a.m. to noon on Saturday, July 13th, but it's okay if you can't stay the whole time. We'll take whatever uh, time you're able to help us with. If you, it helps us to know if you're planning on coming, so please sign up again on the events page of our website or leave a voicemail for Elizabeth Pike when you call the parish office. And a final reminder about OLP Day. Join us next Sat Sunday, a week from tomorrow, for Mass, our volunteer blessing during Mass, the barbecue after Mass, as well as Big Bass Kickball. And finally, wanted to mention that the Archdiocese is hosting a farewell for Bishop Williams, who is moving uh, to the Diocese of Camden, New Jersey uh, this summer. Uh, and that fair will be a 2 p.m. holy hour at the cathedral tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon. And then that will be followed by an outdoor reception. They will have a tent, so no matter what the weather, should be able to, uh, to accommodate everyone. But everyone in the archdiocese is invited uh, to give thanks to God for Bishop Williams' service in our archdiocese. Uh, and to pray for him as he moves to this new, new role as the Bishop of Camden. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. is my song, O God of all the nations, a song of peace for lands afar and mine. This is my home, the country where my heart is. My dreams, my holy shrine, but other hearts in other lands are beating with hopes and dreams as true and high as mine. My 
my country skies are bluer than the ocean and sunlight beams on clover leaf and pine but other lands have sunlight too and clover and skies are everywhere as blue as mine so hear my song O god of all the nations a song of peace for their land and for mine This is my prayer, O God of all earth's kingdoms. Your kingdom come, on earth your will be done. Let Christ be lifted up till all shall serve him and hearts united learn to live as one so hear my prayer O god of all the nations myself i give you let your 